everyone. I think you all know me, but um, I'm Carolyn, if you don't. And uh, I'm a yoga teacher primarily, and uh, I do something called Ayurvedic Yoga Massage. And I also teach meditation and practice mindfulness. Um, so that's kind of my angle that I'm coming in at today, is from the meditation and mindfulness perspective on mental health. Um, so my, I guess I got more focused into how meditation helps people with mental health because um, I just really have a fascination with people and not only our bodies through the, through the body work that I do but also our minds and how our minds work and um, I got into meditation through yoga and I really started to notice the benefits on my overall mental health. Um, I didn't particularly suffer with uh, with you were talking about this, uh, what was the word that you used? The continuum. Yeah, so I guess, you know, obviously I was kind of, some, sometimes I'd be down here towards the dark thoughts and sometimes I'd be here. And then uh, uh, something happened in my life, I lost my mum and then I kind of felt like I was really kind of going down to this side, this end of the scale. But yoga, meditation was a really big part of my life and it, I noticed how that helped me deal with the thoughts that I was having. And when I started to feel really down, it really was making me gain some perspective and help me cope. Um, so that's when I really started to get interested in the benefits on meditation and mindfulness for mental health. And um, after I qualified, I started working with a company called the Mind Institute, and they focus on um, yoga therapy and mindfulness for, for health generally. But um, I did a training with them on yoga therapy and mindfulness for post-traumatic stress disorder. Um, which I'm not going to touch on too much today. I'm more going to talk about depression and anxiety because they're more common mental health conditions that perhaps a lot of us have have actually experienced ourselves or know someone who has experienced it. Um, and I've also worked with uh, homeless charities as well. Can you all hear me, by the way? Yeah. 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 I've also worked with some homeless charities and housing associations and because these groups are teaching them yoga and meditation and because these groups have come from really marginalised parts of our society we just haven't we, as we haven't taken care of them as we should have um, and so they haven't had access maybe to the support community support that we've had um, or a lot of us have had and, and they've suffered through their mental health as a result so there was a lot, there's lots of substance misuse and um, depression, anxiety, psychosis um, and other other health issues as well, generally physical health issues. So, um, yeah, then I kind of got really fascinated in how meditation and mindfulness can help. So I'm going to talk more about depression and anxiety, as I mentioned today. And they're not the same, they're not the same thing, but there are some commonalities. So generally, when we have, if someone has depression and anxiety, the similar, um, the, the commonalities between that is that our thoughts are the present focus, present moment focus. So we're really in depression, we're often ruminating about something that's happened in the past. Anxiety, we're often we've got a really high level of fear or uh, panic about something that's possibly going to happen in the future. And a lot of us have probably experienced that on some scale on this continuum that we talked about earlier. Um, so that's one of the similarities. Another is um, our thoughts feel really out of our control, so that kind of brings about a lot of helplessness and feeling of overwhelm as well. And often with um, depression and anxiety, we have patterns to our thoughts, or our thoughts are kind of in a cycle, and that keeps us in the depression, it keeps us in the anxiety, so it feels like we can't get out. And also just to feel that you're not wanting to feel this way at all. So real, like you mentioned earlier, is definitely like a real resistance to wanting to feel, a resistance to how we're feeling, a resistance to our, like, our reality at the moment. Um, so how does meditation and mindfulness help that? Well, um, and I'm going to talk to you in a minute about the difference between the two, between meditation and mindfulness. Um, but mindfulness helps in that mindfulness is having an awareness to the present moment and to our present moment thoughts and feelings and having a distance to our present moment thoughts and feelings. So if we step back and actually observe our thoughts and feelings rather than we are identifying as our thoughts and feelings, then we can get a little bit of space and in that space that's when some processing can happen and that's when we can actually um, 
not react in that emotion or in that feeling. So, um, like an analogy would be, um, say for example, our thoughts and our feelings are like waves that they keep coming and they're coming and they're going, come and go. And if we're stood in the sea and a big wave comes, then we're gonna get like thrashed around and we're gonna drown at sea. If we're stood on the shore and we can just watch the waves or watch our thoughts come and go and have that distance, then we can just, you know, take that time and enjoy the waves or not enjoy them, um, depending on what the thoughts are. Um, so, does that kind of make sense, make sense yeah. to everybody? Um, so it's this disidentification that we're trying to get to um, through mindfulness. And um, it takes a lot of time. It takes time to get to that point because it's easy if you're, um, it can be easier in certain situations than others. So if, for example, if you're in the heat, if something happens and you're like in the heat of an argument, then you react, right? Like you, if you get angry, it's really hard to just sit with that and observe your anger and just notice it. And often it will just dis dissipate if you can sit and observe it and you won't have lashed out and you won't have reacted and then there won't, like, this thing won't have escalated and it turn into a bad situation. Um, maybe that's an easier scenario than if someone's feeling really depressed um, to deal with. But it, it's very, very helpful. So the way that um, mindfulness helps depression and anxiety is just be able to detach from those thoughts. Um, the difference between meditation and mindfulness. Meditation is generally a practice that we do, like a formal practice, where we take ourselves away from our day-to-day -day activities like what we're doing, washing up, whatever, we take us on the way and we would kind of do some form of practice. That might be to sit and have, usually it's one focused awareness, so it might be to sit and focus on our breath, it might be to focus on a mantra, um, so you can just silently repeat yourself on. If you do yoga, that might be something that works for you or symbol, uh, visualize the symbol of. It might be um, to, you can use mala beads, like the prayer beads, and just kind of focus on moving and breathing, focusing on each breath, moving through the mala beads. Um, so it's usually some form of set practice. It might be focusing on the sensation of the breath entering the nose. If it's vipassana, you might do a body scan, focusing on very tiny sensations in the body. There's tons of different types of meditation. Um, mindfulness is basically a way of living. So mindfulness, Meditation is a part of your mindful life, your mindful practice, and uh, mindfulness is having that awareness, that present moment awareness in everything that you're doing in your day-to-day -day life. So you're walking down the street, um, and most of the time we're walking down the street and we're just thinking like, oh god, I'm really hungry, what am I going to get for dinner? Oh god, there's like no clean plates, and I'm going to have to wash up, and I'm really stressed, and I just, and like you're kind of ruminate and you're just stressing yourself out because you've created this whole situation and actually right now you're just walking down the street the sun's shining maybe and there's nothing in that moment that can really hopefully have a, a negative impact on you so you're just focusing on the sounds you're focusing on like the sensation of walking and you can keep bringing this practice into like everything that you're doing and it takes a lot of practice to be able to do that all the time. But it, it's, if you practice it every day, you notice the benefits. Um, so who, who meditates? Quite a few people. Really? And, uh, <laughs> a lot of time. Uh, oh, and have you tried, have you tried meditate? Like if you don't meditate regularly, have you tried to meditation? Yeah. 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 Quite a few people have tried it. Yeah. Does anyone feel like you just can't do it? Yeah, I don't know how yeah. to do it. So it's like you just can't meditate. So, so the, it's not like a can or can't. It's not like something some people can do and some people others can't do. And I think the main, so I call this like the magic and the myth, because I just thought it sounded good. But <laughs> <laughs> also because I feel like there are so many myths around meditation and that um, so many people say to me like, yeah, I just can't meditate, like, I can't stop my thoughts. I'm like, no, that's not the point. Like, you, it's, Unless you've been meditating for a really long time, like that, the gap between the thoughts gets a lot longer. But when you first sit down to meditate, yeah, you're constantly, your mind is just kind of wandering. Do you have to sit down to meditate? 
Yeah. 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 To not then be in your mind, yeah. that's really hard. And I fully agree that one person's meditation is something different from others. So, yeah, like running, people like say that that's really when they just clear in that headspace and they're in that mode. How did you? For me, I'm just thinking it? about like stopping running. But like, <laughs> like yeah, you're cooking, you're just cooking, and you're in the moment, and it's that. It's like I feel it when you're in your flow, and you're just in your flow, like you're in your moment, and you are just fully there, and that's mindfulness. That's like so. If you can start like really kind of focus on that and, and start to bring that to other aspects, like notice what you're doing when you're cooking and, and then have that full awareness of the present moment when you're doing other things as well, that's mindfulness. I guess it's concentrating on a certain something, Yeah, and fully being yeah, that. Just clearing everything else out. Yeah, yeah. Is that exactly. how you got into it, Kaz? Just like being like in that moment there and then doing it? Um, I kind of got into it through meditation, so I was doing loads of different types of meditation and then I just, I guess that for me, I found that meditating, um, and what would chanting, you consider as meditating? Um, so I was doing lots of different types, but for me, I like to sit and uh, be with the breath and um, I came at it from a yoga angle, so focusing on the breath, focusing on a mantra, I had some mala beads and um, and just moving them along and uh, yeah, like silently in your head um, every time you exhale and like doing that for like an hour. Um, and yeah, your mind wanders, you just come back. Every time your mind wanders, you go to the observe where it's gone and then you just come back to where you were. So if your focus is on your breath, then you come back to your breath and go, okay, my mind is wandered and I'm coming back to the present moment now. And you just have that awareness and you just keep doing it. And over time, over practice, the gaps get longer, and you do have those moments of stillness, and that's and that's really like special, like that's like really special moments, and you feel personally, I feel like a lot more alert and um, able to cope. So there is actually evidence and research that um, meditation or mindfulness practices increases our resilience in our brain and um, our, or, sorry, our resilience to things that happen in our outward environment so we can deal with things better basically um, and I won't get into like the, all the studies but there's one that says that like a neuroscience study that showed that our, the front part of our brain actually, um, you guys probably know about this more than I probably can't explain it as well but um, it thickens the prefrontal cortex, which is where all of our like rationalising of thoughts happens and processing of thoughts happens. So um, we can think about things rationally rather than thinking about things from a place of fear or anxiety. Um, any other kind of comments or like sharing? Yeah. So when you're meditating, are you constantly telling yourself to concentrate on your breathing, or do you find yourself saying, so you go away to somewhere and then you go right, focus on my breathing, but then. So I would so rather than like, like you know, I'm not stressing myself out rather than saying it, it's the whole thing about one thing. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. That my, my, our mind wanders so, so much. Yeah, so you're like, you're saying like, to you, you're actually, have you got like an inner voice going? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> so I'm more focused yeah. on sensation and like, and I say to myself, feel, so if it's breath, say, okay, feel the ribcage expand. And then it, it's more just an awareness yeah. of the sensation of the rib cage expanding, the breath coming in through the nose, filling up the lungs, sort of like and then the sort of state. <laughs> it's like... Done... No, sorry, I'm not oh, taking the picture. No, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, like, so when it's... you've done it for a while, like you feel yourself, you're in, in kind of a trance state where you're not having to remind yourself you're just naturally doing that. Yeah, when you've done it for a while, yeah, yeah you get there, but it's hard. Like, yeah. it's not, I'm not staying there. The best thing that I learned, I've been looking to a
and then your mind will wander as everyone's done. Yeah. You've got that to actuate up to kind of back down content. Yeah. So then and that I think the one way how, I found stillness. Yeah. And, how, and have like, and wherever your thoughts go, that's okay as well. And like and have a, like acknowledge your thoughts and, and thoughts are normal. Like yeah. Yeah. that's okay, that's part of it. That's part of being human. And I think like appreciate the thought and be like, thank you and come back to what the focus. Yeah, no, no, there's that thing you've been saying is like I, th I think a lot of people when they start meditating they think it's about having no thoughts, yeah. Yeah. but it's yeah. not. Yeah. Uh, okay. Like it's 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 about having the like because like you know when you're gonna sit the thoughts are gonna come right, yeah. and the whole point of it is how quickly can you catch yourself having a thought yeah. Yeah. and and bringing yeah. yourself back because when you when you catch yourself having a thought. That's when awareness is yeah, there, right? Absolutely. And and whether you use breathing or whether you use body awareness, whether you use mantras or bees or anything, it's all anchors yeah. that bring you back to actually get, like this moment. But yeah, it's all there. about it's all about like you go there, you come back. You go there, yeah, you yeah. come back. And with time, it's like it's like a muscle, right? It's like a muscle that like that keeps growing stronger and stronger, mm -hmm. and you're you're, uh, you're you're able to get those thoughts quicker. But like I know no one. Like that's been meditating even for years and years. That's able to have no thoughts. It's not possible. Yeah. 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 It's not the goal. Also, if there's a constant thought that keeps coming to your mind, you have to fix it. Yeah. 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 So for me, it was I was constantly thinking about work. And then I realised actually I've got an issue with work, I need to fix it. Yeah. How's the best way to you can't stop thinking about it, then wait a sec, stop trying to meditate, fix that issue, and then go back to meditation. Yeah. And that's how, really helped me. How's the best way to like overcome the thoughts that you have about work and like things that you've got dealing with? Because you you're gonna have things that you're challenged with in work. What's the best way to fix them if you can't fix them yourself in terms of work? So. So, so what you sorry, what you so you've got like Hiam said she's got things in work that are gonna stress her out. Is it best to deal with them yourself or yeah, talk to people yourself. in work about them? Like what's the best way to deal with things you in work if you are about it. Yeah. Yeah, you've got have you gotta go and fix it in work or yeah. is it best to talk to someone about it in work or Yeah, I mean it depends what the issue is, but I mean yeah, or talk to people is always helpful. Yeah. Definitely. There's also part of acceptance, I guess, yeah, and, yeah. and I, I think a philosophy that like works well with meditation is stoicism. So like like knowing what you can do about yeah. the external world and what yeah. you can't do, Changing like what, what's exactly. what's outside of your control and yeah. what's in your control. Yeah. And you know, there are things yeah. that are completely outside of your control, and it's like then it's accepting them as well, and and you know, understanding the highs, understanding the lows, but trying to keep in that really like stable state. Yeah, I mean, it's like maybe um, part of it is like telling your employer about the things that you're dealing with, and like allowing them to understand that, but challenging them at the same time of like what you want to achieve in terms of like a creative thing as well as a. Maybe I'm struggling with this because I'm finding it difficult to actually cope with the situation. There's maybe two sides of it. Communication. I think yeah. it's communication. Because in, in, in life, it's about communication. Yeah. 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 Work, friendship, family. Yeah. yeah. That, really, that reminded me of this thing I saw, and it was this guy, and he said, um, it was like a cycle thing that he had, and it said, um, have you got a problem? Yes or no? No. Why worry? If yes, can you fix it? No. If no, why worry? If yes, why worry? 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 There's also that thing that like problems don't exist in the present moment. I mean, except if you're dying from hunger or like if you're living in a war-torn country. Like in the present moment right now, there's no problems. Like problems can only exist in time. Yeah. And it's you know if you allow yourself to think about this problem in the future and the past, yeah. Uh, then that problem exists. But if you actually all focus on that present moment, there's no real problem. Yeah. There's no problem in the present. And it's like if you are worrying about it that much, let's do something about it and make something better. Let's do it. Oh, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'll get, yeah. Get, get out of it. I'll get on with it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's it. And like not having a resistance to things as well. Like just kind of, yeah, that just accepts it. This is not resisting. Um, so, my, I guess my angle on like meditation is because I came through it from endless mindfulness, I came through it through yoga. And um, I've done a lot of um, 
like training on how the importance of the body and the importance of the messaging from the body to the brain to tell us that we are like that we're okay. And so um, a course that I did I found really interesting when they told me that 80% of the messaging in a body travels up from the body to the brain. I always thought that it's like we're kind of really controlled by the mind. So it's most of the messaging, uh, or like the neurons, are afferent, so they go from the body to the brain, and 20% go from the brain to the body. So we can actually, the, the messages that we send ourselves from the body to the brain can be really, really powerful as well. Um, and kind of like a little bit off topic, but really interesting. I watched this TED talk by someone called Amy Cuddy, and it's called something like Fake It Till You Make It, and um, she got people, like it's a group of people, she split them in half, and she had half of the group do like power poses, so like really taking up loads of space, hands on their hips, and like really strong power poses. And then she got half of the group to do low power poses, like touching their neck and really like drawing inwards. And they, they did this as an experiment, and they, they did their poses, power poses or low power poses in the toilets. Uh, for two minutes on their own and no one could see it just they knew they were doing it and then they got they all went for an interview by the same interviewee interviewer and um he didn't see their cv or anything he just had to judge them based on how they performed in their interview and the, he told he actually to cho choose like six people and all the people he chose were the people who'd done the power poses and the reasons he gave were their presence that they commanded his, his attention and so um yeah i just think it's really cool that you can like the, the power of the body on the mind and so like if you're ever feeling kind of low then her idea is you can fake it till you make it and basically Yay. just like stand in these power poses and they can have a really big impact on the brain so if you've got an interview for that like shit do that um, um so yeah the the for me i think like i've always done like yoga or something before i would do my meditation and um do you guys up for doing like a really short practice you feel like it's do like a meditation, but yeah. not yoga, not yoga. <laughs> um, so, um, I think like if you're dealing with something like anxiety or depression, you can feel they're quite low vibrational, like a feeling, you know, you feel heavy when you've got that, you kind of feel like it's just a heavy, dense feeling. And um, to come into a, a meditation, if you're going to do a seated meditation, can be quite tricky if you're coming in from that feeling of a really low, vib dense, low vibrational energy. And so um, what I feel is, is a great thing to do is before, if you are feeling um, anxious or depressed and you know someone who is and they're doing meditations to so just try and do some form of uh, activity that can really like increase their, uh, their like raise their vibration like so it's dancing or if they can if they can go and exercise or do some yoga or like whatever your thing is that just really kind of gives you a bit of a, like some feel good vibes like just doing that before you sit to meditate because you're coming at it from a bit of a higher angle and I think you're able to deal a little bit more with the emotions that you're going through so it might be that you like play an instrument and you just want to do that before you sit to meditate whatever it is for you singing is amazing because obviously like that's your your like speaking your voice or speaking your truth and just like singing even if you think you sing badly um, yeah. doing it in private <laughs> it's like a real power thing as well like having your voice hurt so that's a really good thing to do um, one thing that I've uh, I've liked in a lot of Osho I don't know if you guys have heard of Osho he's like a spiritual leader from the 80s a little bit controversial um, <laughs> people think that it was kind of a cult and stuff but um he had some really he like he brought meditation to the west to westerners and he was like you guys can't sit here for hours um because you're not used to being sat cross legged and so he brought dynamic meditation so i've done a lot of dynamic meditation and he's really cool and you basically do like half an hour of or 15 minutes of dancing 15 minutes of shaking um and really like get the yeah we're gonna do it so we're gonna really like do like properly like just get your like vibes really high and you've got loads of energy and using up all your energy and then it's 15 minutes of complete stillness and you can either lie down and you can sit down in, in the di normal dynamic meditations and um, you've used up so much energy that I think that you just, I, I, I personally feel really feel the benefits of doing a meditation so I've done that. Um, so, <laughs> I'm going to do a guided meditation anyway so you don't have to join us but I think like let's just stand up and like just move a little bit. Um, oh.
Leave it open. So we've been like you've been sat listening to quite a lot of talk. So let's just do like a really big inhale and reach and stretch up. And oh. inhale and reach and stretch. Oh. And one more time. Oh. Good. Nice. Oh wait, hold on, mate. <laughs> um, okay, so just let's close our eyes, and I know there is kind of people here, but we're all involved, so it doesn't matter about anyone else. We're just gonna close our eyes and really just like bend our knees, stand with your feet like a bit wider than hip distance apart, and just like let your body hang out. So really loosen the arms, and if you are up for it, then I'm just gonna invite you to just start to shake your wrists your legs, we're all closing our eyes, no one can see us, just go for it, okay, there's no, no okay. camera, <laughs> okay, okay. shake it, shake it, shake it, <laughs> right, really go for it, <laughs> give us five minutes, <laughs> I'm joking, shake, Okay, cool. So just stand and close your eyes and put one hand on your heart center, one hand on your belly. And just take a deep breath in and a deep breath out. And again, big sigh. Just connecting with your heartbeat. Just feeling sensations in the body. Feeling the blood pumping around the body. Okay, we're going to just come to take a seat, but just try and stay a little bit introverted and just uh, close your eyes until you sat down. And just sit in a comfortable seated position, but try and sit nice and nice and upright. If anyone doesn't have a seat, it's on here. And closing your eyes and just finding a little bit of energy in the core just so you're rising up nice and straight. And you've got a nice and straight spine. Have your hands somewhere comfortable. And just take a deep breath in and a big sigh out. And again, deep breath in, big sigh out. And now I want you to bring your awareness to the sounds around you. Closing your eyes, noticing the sounds, identifying the sound. Noticing contact points between your body and the seat, and the floor, feeling the pressure on the chair, having an awareness of the sensation in the feet, and the stability support the ground underneath you. If your mind wanders at any point, just come back to that awareness. Begin to notice the feeling of the clothes on your body. Feel the sensation of the fabric touching your body. <laughs> Temperature of the air on the skin. Maybe feeling a slight breeze. Move 
giving your attention to your breath. I am. Just noticing I get a, the rib cage uh, expand and retract, breathe in and out. Noticing the quality of the breath. Is it choppy? Get, yeah. Or is it quite silky and smooth? Begin to find a steady rhythm of the breath. Begin to notice the heartbeat. Feel your heart beating in your chest. Pumping life giving blood around your body. Now have an awareness of both the heartbeat and the breath. Same time. Both life giving forces. Now have an awareness of the heartbeat and the breath and the sensation of sitting. And noticing the touch of fabric on the skin as well. So noticing the sound, the smell. Having a word, everything going on around you right now. then definitely, or if you know someone who has, and it's worthwhile doing that with a coach and alongside a talking therapist and also um, a doctor. I'm not saying this is a replacement for medication because I know that that plays a really important part for some mental health issues, um, but it is a way of perhaps eventually coming off medication if you can start to um, find uh, a regular mindfulness and meditation practice. Um, so that's about it for me, I really just wanted to re finish with 
um, a poem that like really meant a lot to me um, when I was feeling really shit. Um, so I'm just going to read this one. So, um, this is kind of, I read this in a book when I was like on my own in India, feeling really like low actually, and um, it just helped me a lot, so I'm going to share it. It's by Rumi, who's like a pretty old Sufi, yeah, he's, um, he's amazing. So this, it starts with, this being human is a guest house, every morning if a new arrival, a joy, a depression, a meanness. Some momentary awareness comes as an unexpected visitor. Welcome and entertain them all. Even if they're a crowd of sorrows who violently sweep your house empty of its furniture, still treat each guest honorably. He may be clearing, he may be clearing you out for some new delight. The dark thought, the shame, the malice. Meet them at the door laughing and invite them in. Be grateful for whoever comes because each has been sent as a guide from beyond. Thanks to Bobby as well. Can we get another round of So much to everyone here because it honestly means the world. Be support, encouragement, and like engagement levels are amazing there. Good kid. That was a really lovely day. So yeah, thank you so much. Yeah. 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 Yeah.